Okay, one more video where I want to show you uh, what happens when you've got a set of circumstances where it's not extremely easy to tell where that vertex is or where the two lines intersect, um, where the vertex is of the feasible region. So here we'd have y is greater than or equal to 4x minus 16. And then this next one we're going to have, let's make that one purple. So the next one's going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 11. And then we'll make the next one, uh, let's make the next one red. Red's a good color. Got to pick red though. X is greater than or equal to 3. And then the last one we'll make blue. And that's going to be y is less than or equal to 8. So let's start there. Y is less than or equal to 8. That's a horizontal line. And we are going to shade below. Let's go back to red. That's going to be a vertical line at x equals 3. And x is greater than, so we're going to shade to the right. Then we're going to have in purple, we're going to have y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 11. So down to right 1, 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 down to right 1. That hopefully should be enough right there. And that is going to be y is greater than, so we're shading above. So we're looking at where these line, these arrows are pointing at one another. So we're going to do that last in orange. So we've got y is greater than or equal to 4x minus 16. So 16 is right up here. Is that right? Yep, 16 is right there. And we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, minus 16. Minus 16 is way down here. Yeah, negative 16. And then positive 4, up 4, right 1, up 4, right 1, up 4, right 1, up 4, right 1, up 4, right, uh-oh. We didn't go through a lattice point. Up 4, right 1. It's going to end up being okay, but we're going to have to do a little bit of work. So that was y is greater than, so we're going to shade above. So above the line would be above the y-intercept. So hopefully you can see, I'm going to make these, I'm going to circle these vertices in black. And I'm going to shade in in green. So there's our feasible region, and you can see the vertices. So what are these vertices? Well, I've got one clearly at 3 comma 8. 3 comma 8 is definitely one. I've got one at 6 comma 8, most definitely. I've got another definite one at 3 comma 5. But it is this one right here that I do not know the ordered pair. It looks like I've got fractions all the way. So let's look at the purple and the orange. We're going to set them equal to each other. So 4x minus 16 is going to equal, 4x minus 16 is going to equal negative 2x plus 11. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. I'll add 16 to both sides. I get 27 over 6, that's going to equal 9 over 2. So the first part of that ordered pair is 9 over 2, 9 over 2. Now I have to put 9 over 2 back in for x, so instead of 4 times x, I'll have 4 times 9 over 2 minus 16. That's going to be 18 minus 16 is 2. So you can see that solving by graphing is obviously not always the most, um, the most 
accurate way to solve systems unless you're talking about lattice points. And that's why we learn how to solve by substitution, by elimination, Kramer's rule, Gauss-Jordan elimination, um, to get accurate values. But now we have to take these ordered pairs and see which ones maximize the objective function z equals 5x plus 2y. So we're going to put 3 and 8 in for x and y. You've done this over and over and over. So maybe pet, press pause, come up with the answers, because you can see that I am just giving you values. I got z equals 46. 15 and 10 is 25. And 9 halves, comma, 2. That's going to give me 26.5. So we're maximizing. Bingo. 6, 8 is the order, ordered pair that maximizes our function so that the max is equal to 46.